share the screen uh, okay here we go in the part in the chapter one part one we were talking about that the price is what we pay and the value that we, we get and this is by Warren Buffett so we're looking for the value that we're going to get from buying a simple stuff uh, food or whatever to the most complicated thing um, like softwares and solution and if the value that the price that we're going to pay in a dollar sense equal with the value that we will receive or the value is higher then we are willing to exchange the dollars to, the, to that service and product. So basically the customer always, that's what he's looking for is a value. And also we introduce in general, the solution of higher education as a sample and how the processes, it, it breaks down. Also, we talked about the reason to look for a system and how uh, some companies say yes, we want to replace our legacy system. Some of them would say uh, we need to replace our uh, uh, our current uh, supplier because the supplier is not doing a, uh, a, a good job. And uh, there is other uh, reasons. And it could be a combination of the reason we are seeking a new system or we need to integrate multiple systems. And we spoke about the perceived benefit of a system, and these benefits should be presented to the management and CIO and CTO in order for them to make the decision to invest uh, into a new software, a new solution, or keep on the current solution. So the current solution, they will examine it against such things uh, that a tighter integration, IT cost reduction, data accuracies, adoption and industry standards. And we talked about different reasons why they, how, what's the benefit of utilizing their current applications and softwares and solutions, or whether they want to replace it. And also we talked about the value is about reducing the time of processing or reducing the time of uh, uh, acquiring. We're also looking at uh, the value of lowering the cost of productions. We also, we spoke about minimizing the risk in an overall. And we talked about the poor enterprise uh, software decision. Sometimes the company and the organization just don't do their uh, due diligent work and they just pass it to uh, you know uh, the supplier to let them know but if you are selecting a bad thing uh, to run your system for the next 5 to 10 years basically you paying money to get headache heartaches and problems and you become less effective so poor enterprise software decision costs companies time money and headache or hardly. And we talked about uh, failing in the implementation, failing in selecting the solution. They are running to problems. Uh, some of them, they said, we would not choose the same application and there is implementation failed. And we said that these numbers could be very high than what we look because there is a tendency, whoever is selected that does not want to expose himself or herself. So the easiest way and the biggest mistake that you easy let the ownership and control in the hand of the salespeople, of the company, the suppliers of the software or the consultant of the software, because these are the people, more consultancy hours, better for them, more functionality, better for them. And uh, once you sign in with them, whether you like it or not, you're signing that you need to uh, pay uh, yearly uh, fees for using their software, beside you paying for the maintenance and support, and beside you paying 
uh, you know, implementation and you play first time buying that application. So as a lots of investment and there is a hidden cost investment that you need to calculate before you selecting. There is a total owner, uh, total cost of ownership you need to calculate, which is what we'll be talking about it, how you do that in the later uh, stage uh, in our semester. We talked about the common mistake. The common mistake is not clearly communicate why we need such an application or solution. We talked about what really needed to there, knowing exactly to how to do it. The uniqueness, we said that you might bring in a consultant who worked in another hospital and you're a, he's a consultant. He says, well, let's use the same application or the IT person who use the same application different. And there is a uniqueness in your business is different than your competition or your neighbor uh, company. Uh, choosing the most qualified vendor, you have always, you have to have an open eye and you give the implementation time and attention needed because you're looking at investing in solution for a long term. Now with the challenges that we always face when we try to implement or they promise in us is more marketing rhetoric. We want to see is these are fact or just marketing. Sometimes you get delivery versus promises, uh, software, hardware, not compatible. These are technology implementation failure. These are technology uh, challenges. The internal challenges, I do have a limited resources and I'm fully utilize them in doing their bus uh, business and they are generating income and they don't have time to use uh, to help in implementing. So this is a, a challenge for uh, internal challenge. And there is a project challenge, which is we're not clear about uh, the it's an unstructured plan and unclear scope and the challenges goes on. But the biggest thing that you might, it might cause the failing is the biggest challenge, which is building the consensus, building everybody agree on going with the X solution or Y solution. And that doesn't come if the, everybody understand why we are doing such thing. Once you get the consensus, you then you probably, some of your road will be very clear and you can move on with it. So we said there is four core, four core competencies for in order for you to evaluate your application or to uh, select an application or a solution. The first core is the research. You, you have to do a full uh, honest research of application and solution available in the market. You also need to have a methodology, which is we will be talking about the methodology of solution or software selection and evaluation. We, you also need to have experience. You cannot uh, have no experience and start you know, selecting as a solution for you. And we also spoke about the technology. You have to be up Updated on the technology and where is the direction is going and whether this solution you selected can accommodate the future needs and demand. Here, so we were talked up to here. Now the issues here comes in when we are doing uh, evaluation for our softwares or for our solution. First of all, we need to separate uh, issues from each other. So here, what we are looking at, we need to separate the objective things from the subjective part. Now, the objective is like something is very clear, one plus one is equal with two. The subjective is something is depend on the user. So here, what we are looking for, we really need to, to to make the decision whether we're gonna go with the software that we have solutions or selecting a new one. First of all, we it's like a, a pyramid where you need to start building it from the bottom up. And to build it that, you have to separate the objective part from the subjective part. 
And the first thing, the objective, the very clear objective is functionality and technology. You put your functionality, does your application solution meet your functionalities that requirement? The new one, is it gonna replace the similar functionalities or they gonna add more functionality that you are looking for? Also the process and procedure. The second part is the technology. So the technology, you it has to be very clear. If I'm using DB2, it would be very difficult uh, as a database, very difficult to do RDBMS. We had a situation where we went on with the supply with the with a customer explaining how wonderful our solution. In the end, we found out that he's all his solution is run on many frames, and our solution does not run on a mainframe. So we had the difficulties at that time to really uh, convince the customer to really uh, throw his six million dollars uh, mainframe investment and come with us in our way. So the objective is very clear, is the functionality and technology. Once you are clear about them, then you start building the subjective part. And the subjective part is like uh, market data. Research about the market data. How many companies is implementing this? What has done for them? These are the marketing or market data that you need to collect. And then you can do the RFP technical review. So you publish your RFI to invite most of the companies that you think they can, and then you select them and you build an RFP request for a proposal and submit it. And this is would be a subjective because some answers of the question, it could be acceptable for you, but it could not be acceptable for the end user or the for manager or the other IT person. So it is a subjective in a way. Then we go with a scripted scenario. You see the subjective part which goes more and more there. When we talk about scripted scenarios is you probably invite the suppliers, SAP, Oracle, whomever you're planning to, and you give him a scripted scenario. Show me how to do a, a posting uh, in on a, in financial and how this, uh, you know, um, show you how the process is happening and you have your interest. That's what you call a scripted uh, scenario. And then easy to use. Well, this is a very subjective thing. Easy to use to whom? To you, to your friend, uh, in your work, to your colleague, to your boss, or the uh, non-IT people. So easy to use, you need, once again, is a subjective, but has to be built after you clear the two objectives. And the seven is process fit. As we said that companies cannot change averagely more than 15 to 20% adjust their processes. So you want to make sure you don't suddenly change all the company's processes. If you, because this application carries, this solution carries the best practice, which is they meant best processes. But if suddenly you introduce all the best processes to a, a company, this company might reject that. And the second part of it is best processes for whom? Is it good for me, uh, fit me? Can I adjust now 15 to 20% of my processes and later on I make it better? Because the processes, if it's right, you making a profit, your cost is going lower, and your, if your processes is really inefficient, and we spoke about it uh, in that uh, chapter two, part one, um, then it costs you more if you have inefficient processes or bad processes. So that's uh, uh, the processes that you look. If we spoke about now easy to use and processes. And the last part you look at it is the reference. 
It's what my neighbor is using. What's my competition is doing. What's the company that better as me is doing. But we have a tendency, most of the companies go from top to bottom, which is that's doomed to be getting into mistakes. You need to be building from the bottom to up. You start from functionalities, technology, then marketing data or market data, then you build your RFI and RFP technical review. Then you do a scripted uh, scenario and you invite a few companies to do to present that. And then you will go around and see how easy to use. And then you, you will uh, find out how much of your processes that you need to adjust, uh, whether the solution can adjust to your processes. Uh, or you have to adjust it to the solution processes. And then the last thing, the last thing you look at the reference. So the analytical evaluation, a consultant, this is supposed, is, uh, in, supposed to do. First, they have to do a research. And then the second step, they have to do an evaluation. And the last is selection. In this process, what we would do, we do a requirement criteria. So we go to the end users, we collect the features and functions and things that he's gonna do. And maybe they're already uh, in place in the application that he's using, or maybe it's not in place what he likes to have the requirements there. And we gather them, we change them to the technical requirement. So the people in the supplier side understand the, the requirement. And these, the feature and the functions, categories, requirement, requirement, requirement. And then we look at the custom requirement, things that we think it's a special, that our neighbor don't have it, our competition to have. Once we're done with this research, we go, and start prioritize these requirements. Some requirements must have, some requirements important, some requirements is a critical, like a core solution for his job. And some requirement is nice to have. Um, so you look at them as must to have, under them, under the must to have, you look at whether important, critical, or not needed, these requirements now, or maybe maybe needed in the future. At the very important do we requirement, which is the feature and functions, uh, which is their custom requirement, as you see here, the feature and function you see, very important and must have an important to have because they are a customer, custom requirement and these are, we use them, to operate our uh, uh, organization. Once we finish with the end user priorities, so we start from the end user priorities, as we said earlier, we saw in the first slide, you start from the top, you go to the bottom, and then you start evaluating. Now, how you do evaluate, you evaluate your current solution your vendor B or A and the vendor C, you do a cross evaluating. And because you have all the function and feature and nice to have and must to have and critical to have, then you say this, the solution, the vendors will be glad to let you know whether it's supported customization there or whether you have it supported in your solution. Sometimes your current solution have all the requirement and supporting all your requirement and the suppliers don't have these things. You do some personal, some customization. So the you do, once you cross check with the function and features, functions and features or feature of functions, then you see, who is supporting most of the functions that you can do. Now, it's when, when there is a, you're seeking a function that is a nice to have, uh, it's a different than you're seeking a function that must have. And later on, I will show you how you set up 
the uh, point numbers or points to these evaluation. You need to do this evaluation with a, diff a certain approach, which is sometimes we, we don't have the full picture of final result. But if you put you know, this way of the evaluation, you will have a, uh, a full result. Not to go ahead, I'm just gonna stick to this and probably in a week two or three, at week three or four, we will be talking more about how you prioritize things. Then after the evaluation, you will do a selection, which is the selection we spoke about uh, here when we do the evaluation, which product is meeting all the solution, which product is product C, if it's, uh, you see, if we can say, put it this way, it says product A, which is our coolant solution, has only eight criteria or eight functionality is failing. A product P, which is we are planning to buy and invest in it, has a 12 criteria that failed in it. They don't meet the 12 criteria. And product C, which is the another vendor, is also has failed it. So if you notice here, maybe our current solution is meeting all the requirement that we are needed. But that can be divided in a percentage wise, when we have a hundred functions and 60% of it is, is met, then we have something like a 60% is met. And then we have, for example, 58% is met. This would be clear how many requirements is met. Later on, we would do the weighted average is when this percentage versus how much is important, must have, nice have, so if it's met, you give it one mark, but the weight for it, it could be from 50, which is nice to have, to critical or important, which is you probably set it up at 90 per 90. So one multiply 90 becomes 90, but one multiply 50, 60 becomes 60. So the end here, the weighted average makes a big difference when you're multiplying and you see which one is more important. Then you come with the selection once you do the weighted average, but the process of the selection is not stopping here. You have an extended criteria that you need to do, which is you look at marketing data or market data here. You look at the demonstration, which as you said, you do a customized, uh, demonstration and you check the references here. Then you also here in marketing data, you need to evaluate what's nice to have, what's important to have and what's less important. And eventually you do an assessment for these extended criteria. So there is requirement criteria is made of the feature function and categories. Uh, customs ones and the extended criteria. And if you notice here, what we have spoke about it is we spoke about the last things is the reference, is the marketing data is the last thing you do. So just to wanted to take you back to the last slide, remind you this, what we meant here. Now, after that, when we do the selection, but then we come up with a solution. But how are we gonna do it? From the beginning, when we want to evaluate our solution or we wanna replace our solution, trust me, it would be very wise to build a project plan to communicate because we said the problem, people don't know why and they don't have the time for it. But if you're building a project plan for software evaluation, for solution evaluation or a project to implement a new application and communicate that with the end users and the management so they can allocate time for you to do that. So in the project, you build a project charter. Out. We will talk about project management, a full chapter alone, but here we're just gonna give you a good feeling about it. So a general feeling. Uh, the outline, the project, we need to clear when we do a project here, 
we have to set up the objectives clear, what we want to do, and we need to divide the role and responsibility. So it's, voila, let's say you make a selection or evaluation, it takes you maybe four months. Just don't leave it like this as way they do uh, uh, consultant. So you should have it a clear communicated with the management and with the end users and how you, there is a kickoff meeting, there is a research which is divided in different stages. And then in a month three, probably you wanna do or uh, uh, evaluation, eventually you come up with the, your research, whether you wanna do a selection for uh, external vendors or you are happy with your application. This is a sample of an ERP district uh, manufacturing. See, here the tech advisor, which is I showed you the video of, uh, you know, earlier of the CTO uh, tech advisor, he has a patent, they're located in Montreal. They have a patent of doing all these things uh, and they develop it to application. So here what they do, you as a consultant makes it easier and more organized. And uh, we will show you one day the details of the application. You go one by one and you try to really evaluate it based on the solution. So um, here where would we will stop, I think, because this can be event eventually, if you notice here, you're trying to supply, implement your ERP. It's very clear it's telling you for what criteria is failing if you're buying a new ERP and you still can compare, compare it with your you know, ERP. And also it tells you very clear the percentage wise, which one match you the best. Now there is, you can select the vendors, you can prioritize your need, you can compare the result and you can put the what if analysis, rating graphics and report. It's, it's a, an application that they develop where you can enter your data and get the result process. Usually a consultant do it on an Excel sheet and not very uh, effective not uh, good for the management to make a decision. Here is a very clear, and you go step by step doing from financial to human resource, and they can be expanded. And then the questionnaires comes in here and you enter the your answer, nice to have, must to have, hard to have, not necessary. And then it compares it to application like SAP, for example, Oracle, NetSuite and see, is it matching and how much is matching? We will talk more details about this part of the application, uh, hopefully in the, the class after. <laughs>